Hey guys, B1 Studios here, and today I have sort of an Adobe Audition tutorial for us to go through, and uh, it's just going to go through a couple of things that I like to do whenever I have a soundtrack that I'm going to use. So basically, whenever I'm doing logo animations or if I'm doing some sort of a thing that requires a melodic soundtrack, there's a certain set of things that I will do to alter the audio to make it sound better or make it sound a little bit more to what I want it to sound like. And I just wanted to share some of those things with you today. And uh, being a musician and composer myself, I feel that these things are actually quite important for you to do whenever you are using a soundtrack of any kind. So, without any further ado, let's get started. So the first thing that you want to do is obviously have your soundtrack. So I'm just going to go on to incompetech.com and uh, I must say that this is one of my favorite places to go to find royalty free soundtracks and music and stuff. So uh, I highly recommend it. It's called incompetech.com and uh, it's got tons of really great stuff composed by Kevin McLea. I hope I pronounced that right, but um, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, find a random soundtrack for us to use for this tutorial. And um, this one sounds good, it's called Unity, and all I'm going to do is just go ahead and uh, pause that and just download the track. And it's completely free, which is why I love this website. And I'm just going to save it real quick and wait for that to load. And now I have my soundtrack. So what we're going to do is make this soundtrack sound better using Adobe Audition. Alright, so I'm going to open up Adobe Audition. And I already have it open actually. So I'm just going to drag in my media file. and. Um, might take a while, but okay, so here is my little soundtrack that I just downloaded. And um, unfortunately, I have no way of letting you hear what's going through my speakers right now, but uh, this is a pretty nice soundtrack. So we're just going to do a couple of things to enhance this music. So it's super easy what I'm about to show you. So all we have to do really is go over to the effects rack and in the effects rack there's going to be a lot of really easy presets we can apply so if we just click on the drop down and go to music enhancer the name already i mean that pretty much speaks for itself and it's going to give me some cpu intensive warning just hit okay it's fine and um, you'll notice it applies um, a couple of effects and if we play through it, it already is starting to sound a little bit amplified, kind of, and um, it definitely sounds a lot better. Alright, so another little effect that we can apply in the effects rack, if we drop that down, is something called Radio Announcer Voice. Now, as the name implies, this is actually a nice effect that you can apply if you're doing some sort of a voiceover and you want a radio type effect, like stuff that you hear on the radio FM, obviously, to make it sound a lot cleaner, and that's a great effect to apply if you want to try that. There's also another effect called Karaoke Machine, and um, if we just apply that, just hit OK again on the warning. And um, that's actually going to apply a very interesting boosted effect that's going to boost certain amplitudes and get us a nice sound. Another very important thing that you want to be careful about is the wetness or dryness of your music. So if you notice, there's a little slider that I can um, move back and forth between wet and dry, and it's really a descriptive kind of sound. So if you get it in the middle between 50% wet and 50% dry, you're gonna get sort of a muffled kind of weird, um, almost liquidy kind of effect. 
but if you go to each extreme of wet and dry, what I would recommend is drag it all the way to the wet side and then see if the sound kind of appeals to you or drag it all the way to the dry side and see if that sound sounds better. With every single piece of music, I find it to be different, so you might just try whatever you find is appropriate for the soundtrack that you're using. All right, now I'm gonna go over a couple of really extreme effects for your extreme music. So if we look here, there's a preset called Smashed Dynamics. And what this is really going to do is, say you have a soundtrack such as this one that I'm using right now that has a really heavy bass and you want to really fatten that bass up. This preset called Smash Dynamics will really help you fatten up all those bass sort of, it's sort of like a bass booster but not really the same because that's actually a different effect. But if you want to try that, that's definitely an option. And if you happen to need something even more extreme than Smashed, I would recommend that you go one more down to find the Sonic Destructor. Now, this name pretty much says it all. On top of the heavy bass, it's also going to apply a little bit of distortion. So if you have a soundtrack that you want to sort of make kind of crumbly and uh, um, almost maybe a little bit of static in the background if you can sort of hear it but overall just just a little bit of distortion not too much so as to alter the actual soundtrack but it definitely adds an interesting effect not for all audio files but if you want to try it just go ahead all right so I'm listening to this track right now and for me I think in particular the effect that I like is the music enhancer effect. So I'm going to go back to that and uh, set it to dry because I think that sounds a little bit better. And now I'm going to hit apply in the bottom left corner. And this is important because you want to apply the effects that you've just basically heard. And if you don't do this, the effects aren't actually going to take effect, so to speak. All right, so now I have my enhanced soundtrack here, and it is looking good, or rather sounding good. Now, there is one effect in particular that I cannot stress enough is a very helpful little thing that you can do. So first, actually, let's go ahead and press the power button to turn on the effect, and let's go to filter and EQ and look for a parametric equalizer. This is a very powerful little effect that you can apply. Although it looks kind of complicated, as I always say, look for the presets. Even if you're a beginner, you just look for the presets. It's super easy to apply any preset that you want. And even if you don't know what all the little things at the bottom mean, really it's a matter of playing around with effects until you get what you want. So what I can actually do is play the music in the background and then adjust the graph as I'm listening to it to see what sort of um, effect that I like. So right now I'm playing it and maybe I want to um, lower the mid-tones a little bit or make them a little bit higher. And you just play around with all the points that are on there or apply presets or all sorts of things that you can do with this effect that are really quite cool. And just to explain it real quick, to the right side of the graph you have all your trebles, which are your high, uh, high pitch tones, and then to the left you actually have all your bases. So you might want to consider moving them up and down in volume, which is on the y-axis of the graph and then you'll get sort of boosted trebles or high pitches or boosted basses which are low pitches. So as I'm playing through the track I'll sort of move the points around until I get an effect that I like. You can also adjust the gain in the bar to the left of the graph and the gain is basically the volume sensitivity and um, if I just bump that up or move that down you'll notice there's a change in volume and a change in quality as well. That can also get you interesting 
quality variations of your soundtrack, so you might want to try that too. Alright, so just exit out when you're done, and uh, it sounded good, so I'll just hit apply. And you can layer multiple effects at a time, so once you hit apply on a rack, you can then go ahead and apply more effects on top of it. Just keep hitting apply and they'll apply on top of each other. Alright, so I'm pretty satisfied with how this is sounding right now, so I'm going to go ahead and save it, file, and go to export file. And uh, that's command shift E, just in case you're wondering. Um, I might change the file name to edited, that's what I usually do, so I can differentiate between my original file and also my edited file. Make sure I know where I'm saving it because that's always a very important thing. I'm not being sarcastic actually. It, it is a very important thing. So if I hit OK, it'll tell me that it's being saved to a compressed format. Quick little tip here. Um, personally, I don't hear that big of a difference between non-compressed and compressed audio files. Although if you have really sensitive ears, you will be able to hear the difference. But for all intents and purposes, your best bet is probably, if you're not looking at a very large project, if you're just looking to do some small stuff with this soundtrack, you probably don't need to save an uncompressed file, which is probably going to be .aiff, which is going to be a very large file. But if you save it as an mp3, it will be much smaller. If we just want to try and save it as an AIF file, you'll notice it's uncompressed, and we'll hit OK. So basically what an AIF file will do is, since it's uncompressed, it's going to retain as much of the original quality of the file as it can, which is why the file ends up being so much larger, because it's meant to be the highest quality and no compression of any kind, so no trying to make the file fit in a much smaller amount of space. So that's sort of what you're going to get in an uncompressed file. But if you need smaller file sizes, like for me, storing more music is probably more important at this point with the projects that I take on than actually having uncompressed versions. So I usually save them as mp3 files because the quality is most likely not going to be an issue. Even if I save it as an mp3, the quality is not going to go down that much. So just for your general knowledge, I think it's just a little tidbit of information that you'd like to know. Alright, so that's all there is to it. So just to recap, um, I got a soundtrack off of Incompetech.com. I'll actually leave the link to that soundtrack right below in the description. So if you want to follow along this tutorial with the exact soundtrack that I used, which is called Unity, it's a nice soundtrack, um, you can grab it from the link that I'm going to leave below. And basically all we did was take the original soundtrack and apply different simple presets from the effects rack, such as Music Enhancer, uh, Karaoke Machine, and certain things that will boost the quality or make the audio sound a little bit better. And we also tried a few extremes and played around with the parametric equalizer, which allows you to boost trebles and basses and edit sort of audio points on the graph. And uh, those are all pretty cool effects and I hope you enjoy playing around with them as much as I do. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial.